well, there may be another change in the MLB broadcast landscape. We've got ESPN reportedly leaning towards opting out of MLB contracts, but if you read the article, it's not really what the headline looks like. It might be ESPN actually adding more games to their arsenal when it comes to MLB. Now, I want to talk about the relationship ESPN has with MLB in comparison to other sports, specifically the NBA and the NFL, because those are kind of like the big three sports. You also do have the NHL, but I just want to talk about the NFL and the NBA and then get into this article and kind of why I think, I mean, it's obvious that ESPN has shifted away coverage of MLB baseball in favor of both the NFL and the NBA. And it's really a comparison between the NBA and MLB. We all know the NFL by far is the number one most popular league. It is not debatable. But when you look at the ratings, both local, the playoffs, the World Series, the finals, MLB actually beats the NBA a lot of the times when it comes to the playoffs and local ratings and things like that. But why is ESPN so obsessed with the NBA when it comes to social media and even some of the TV rights as well? It mainly has to do with, I think, especially when it comes to social media, the average age of an NBA fan versus an MLB fan. MLB fans typically are a lot older. Now, maybe that changes with the pitch clock, things happening faster, but it really is crazy to see when you look at ESPN social media feeds, the coverage comparison of the NBA versus MLB. It's not even close. Now, getting to this article, it says, the article later states that ESPN doesn't want to get out of the baseball business entirely However, it notes that ESPN wants to be able to get more for its almost half a billion dollar annual deal, and this could include local rights. So are they insinuating that maybe ESPN would take over some local games for teams? We know the complete mess that's going on with Bally Sports. By the way, I think Bally Sports is going to be completely done when it comes to hosting regional teams. You know, they've lost several teams. They struck a deal back about three months ago. I did a video on it where they're basically on death's door. They've already filed for bankruptcy. The question is, who's going to pick up the rights to these teams, possibly if Bally Sports doesn't exist in 2025, which I don't think it will. And there was a story about three months ago basically saying that this is it for Bally Sports 2024. Could ESPN pick up local teams and possibly have a few different local games per week? Would that be a thing? How would that really work? Would the announcers of the local teams just stay the same and run it under an ESPN banner? Is that what they're insinuating? This is all very interesting. You can see it also reports that ESPN has yet to come to an agreement with NBC for its early afternoon Sunday games that had aired on Peacock. So if you remember, MLB had these Peacock streaming games that started at like 11.05 Eastern time. I do not believe those are back this year. Because remember Sunday games in general, they used to start at 105, 110. You know, that would be the standard start time for Sunday games, Eastern time, and it was great. And then they bring in this whole Peacock streaming thing, which, look, I just hate streaming. I think it's annoying. Like, the idea of streaming versus cable, look, I understand streaming is cheaper. I get it, but it's just, it's a worse product. You cannot argue that streaming is a better product. When you stream something, you really can't change channels. There's lag, there's delay, it's choppy, it's buffering. There's no way you can argue to me that streaming is better than cable. Now, you could say it's cheaper. Okay, that's fine. But the idea that it's better, so I just don't watch streamed events. Honestly, I really don't. Um, so I never watched the Peacock or games or whatever, the 11 a.m. games. I mean, Apple TV, I think, is a terrible product. The announcers are not good. And in, in, in general, Peacock had an agreement where they would have these really early Sunday games, and it ended up pushing the 1 o'clock games back to, like, 140 because they wanted the full window or, like, most of the window. And that's why all the 1 o'clock games got pushed back and... Now the start time's like 135, 140. It's, it's a real nuisance. I'm not a fan of it. And you would think maybe they would fix it. But now apparently, according to this article, maybe ESPN will have the rights to those early Sunday games. They're in talks with NBC. Maybe they'll end up purchasing that. Of all the major sports leagues wrapped up in the Diamond Sports bankruptcy saga, MLB has played hardball the most 
and taken over local rights to several teams, including the San Diego Padres. We remember last year, mid-season, that happened where MLB Network had to come in and air the games and take over uh, from Valley Sports. And it was going to happen to a few other teams, but they reached an agreement. I believe it was Texas, Cleveland, and Minnesota were the three teams that MLB Network was going to take over starting this year. But Valley Sports was able to finalize something to at least host those teams for one final season. ESPN also offering links to RSNs now. It could be an opportunity for ESPN to get more inventory while also allowing MLB a place to offer local broadcasts for the rights they possess. So they are insinuating possibly ESPN taking over some local games. I don't think it would be a thing where ESPN would just completely take over all of the rights, but maybe like two games a week for you know just a random team they could possibly have. This is an interesting development. Who needs who more in this scenario with both in flux? That's a very hard question to answer. It's hard to really give a proper value for local rights at this point in terms of there's a thousand different ways to watch games, there's streaming, there's cable, and we really, you know, Fox didn't want to renew. That allowed Bally Sports to take over, and Bally's just had a terrible product. We knew it was a gimmick from the beginning in 2021 when they launched. The scoreboard is terrible. It's all about gambling with them, and it was about getting their name out there. That's all that was when they took over all the RSNs. You can see it later says ESPN has slowly been de-emphasizing the sport over the years as it moves to focus more on the NFL and NBA. And again, the reason I think that is is because of social media and the age of NBA fans is a lot younger than MLB, even though you can argue that MLB is straight up more popular in the general sense than the NBA, but it's certainly not pop more popular on social media. But then again, who really cares about social media? It's all about their TV ratings. That's what really makes money and allows MLB to get these huge TV contracts. Now, when it comes to ESPN, they did have that two-game series in South Korea. Obviously, it was completely overshadowed by the Otani news. And I don't know if I'm going to do a video on the Otani news. It certainly is a terrible for MLB that this is coming at the beginning of the season, but I'm just not a fan of ESPN's scoreboard. They have the exact same scoreboard that they had last year. What is with the black background on both of the teams? It just looks so bad. If you had a background, like, like for the Dodgers, you could make it blue, and for the Padres, you could make it some type of, you, you know, dark brown or something, I think that would be an okay scoreboard. The fact that they've switched it to having just a pure black background, you want to talk about boring. I'm just not a fan of that scoreboard. And when MLB really kicks off, I will go through all the scoreboards, see if any of them have updated. Of course, Bally, uh, looking at the spring training games, they're sticking with the same scoreboard. We could be in the year 2060 and Bally would have the same scoreboard. But you can see this is another headline. DSG agrees Bally Sports RSN rights deals with MLB. The Rangers, the Guardians, and the Twins linear deals for the 2024 season as they seek to exit Chapter 11 bankruptcy. It's only going to be 2024. There's also reports Bally Sports planning to end MLB broadcasts after 2024 season. And now the question comes, who will get all those rights? You've got 11 teams remaining on Bally Sports. 15 teams with the NBA, by the way. But when it comes to MLB, because that's what I'm talking about right now, is ESPN going to take that over? Is it going to be MLB Network? I would really like to see Fox get back in the mix, but Fox is just obsessed with college football. That's where all their money is going. So I don't know. I guess we'll have to see what happens. There's just, it's not very attractive at this point, I guess, these local rights. Either way, maybe ESPN takes over some of it with MLB Network also possibly taking over and Bally Sports. This has got to be the end of Bally Sports here in 2024 being its last year. But either way, guys, that is going to do it for this video. Make sure you follow me on X. Link to that's always in the description.